this video I'm going to show you how I painted the multicolored skin of my Griff Charger by mostly using wet and wet and layering techniques. You can find a detailed color guide PDF about the finished miniature on my Patreon page. Here is the link if you want to check it out. You can also find PDF color and painting guides to any miniature I paint regardless if there's any video about it or not. Patrons do also get additional exclusive video content like this in-depth video about painting fur structures on beasts. And uh, as always, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and enjoy the video. So before I start with a paint job, I kind of look at references. And in this case, I was looking at the um, painted version of Games Workshop uh, Griff Chargers and also the Elite Griff Charger. And uh, they gave me the idea of, of these multicolored uh, skin tones. And uh, I plotted out the beginning colors, and uh, like I said, I always want to have a bit of a, a starting point that I'm probably a lot of the time adjusting anyway, and uh, yeah, add some some color variations or yeah, drop completely as I move on. But uh, in this case, I stayed somewhat close to the original plan, which was painting the whole thing in red uh, with blue limbs, blue front limbs, and uh, yeah, lighter back limbs. So uh, I started off by laying down the base colors in a pasty consistency. And then I started sort of blending together the colors that were still wet to get a, a bit of a transition and a gradient. And uh, I had to do this a couple of times because it was a while since since I tried uh, wet and wet, and it was a pretty hot day. That wasn't the best. Uh, decision to to do some wet and wet on that day but uh, you can see that the two colors mix together and they somewhat form a mid-tone and uh, you want to make sure that the colors are not too dry when you try to blend them together and also you want to have a brush that doesn't have too much of a perfect tip. So here, like I said, I wanted to have blue front limbs, but I also wanted the, especially the, uh, the clawed limbs that also have some, some scales in the front to be rather dark at the end. So I'm setting up here a gradient towards almost black with some darker blue and I just paint the color over the over the blue in a bit of a transparent consistency not too thin because I still want some coverage and uh, I think I gave it two passes uh, let the first one dry and then then add a second one. Uh, here I'm bringing back some of the intensity of the blue and uh, just use a damp brush to blend together the dark blue and the, the more intense turquoise. Again, focusing on some of the areas that I want a bit more intense, and here I'm setting up the wet and wet for blending the the blue and the red together again. And uh, I use a, a 
pasty consistency so that there's actually some uh, pigment to work with. You can see I'm using the red again. And uh, I just I just add the two layers next to each other and blend them together with a with a wet brush. Um, thinking about it now, it's probably better to to apply apply the, the two layers next to each other and um, paint over paint over it with one color. Paint over. Uh, one color with the other and try to blend it together on the black base coat, but you can experiment with that The result I was still somewhat satisfied with the result So um, Yeah, here I'm mixing in some some of the red into Yeah areas that are a bit further away from the gradient so that you get some yeah, differences in colors and uh, some more interesting patterns. Again, using a damp brush to blend and feather. Uh, it takes a bit of experience, but you'll see. Uh, you'll find out what the best uh, brush movements are. For uh, for wet and wet blending, And here you can see the, the pasty consistency again that I'm applying. And uh, I just take some black and just like I did on the limp, I just add a bit of the blue back into the red so that there's uh, a gradient again. And you, like I said, you can see me clean my brush um, during the blending. That's when I get rid of the color and just use a damp brush to to feather or uh, wipe the two colors together. And especially on this side, you can see that there is actually a gradient going on. And at this point, I'm somewhat happy with the result. So I decided to also make the inside of the front imp a bit more intense again and then feather out with a damp brush so that we get the gradient back from the dark blue to the light blue. And this is a bit of a mid color. I will get to to highlighting uh, all the areas a bit later. So right now I'm just setting up the base colors, the mid tones, and moving to the to the hind leg. Again, I'm applying the the two colors next to each other. First red, and then I'm going to to use some sandalwood from Scale Color. I'm 
and just apply a thick layer over the black and I also mixed some, some red in there already and uh, I decided that it needs a second second layer of the lighter color to, to cover all the black and you can see me shading in the red into the recesses of that uh, of that light area a bit later and uh, in this footage I mainly focused on on this side so actually this side is, is going to be shown from beginning to the end again I'm just going back and forth with applying some of the mm, the base color again and then blending everything together like I said it was a dry bit of a dry day uh, so I need to repeat some of the steps as you get more experienced you will see how the color behaves and then maybe get it right on the first or second try I think it took me two or three in this case but yeah, um, you can see me just as I see fit at um, the lighter color or the red again. And uh, here, like I said before, you will see me add just tiny bits of color into the still wet color and then just feather and dab and drag the pigment around in order to get a gradient going. So at this at this point it's not that much of a straightforward technique anymore but uh, what I'm doing here is just focusing on volumes putting in some lights as you can see here focusing on the upwards facing volumes Again, just using some pure sandal wood and dabbing it on and just fading it out into the still somewhat wet red. Just mixing, you can see me do sometimes just dabbing movements and sometimes it's a bit of a, a spiral movement. And here what, that, what I'm doing is I just use some water to fade out the areas that are too harsh to get back some of the gradient. And then I'll, I'll start using some layering to, to get especially this area uh, a bit more interesting. But yeah, here, here's the area where I want the red to still show, but uh, already have some of the, the lighter color come through. So this is a bit of a, a crucial moment in that gradient. So uh, as you can see, I covered some of the already highlighted area with a bit of a, a medium red. <coughs> and then bringing back some of the lighter color again by by starting far away from where the two colors are meeting so that I have the, the pure white or not white uh, the pure sandalwood in this case where I want it to be really intense and then just move into the red and uh, because both both colors are still wet they just kind of mix on their own with a little help <laughs> Yeah, like I said, I'm doing two or three passes here, maybe even four, until I was satisfied. But again, the more passes you do, the better, because the, the smoothness will be uh, just evolving and it's just being built up gradually.
just showing the rest of this process and here I think I use some pure sandal wood to emphasize the, the lower parts of that area of that hind leg and here I'm applying a wash a really thin down wash of the red to get some of the red into the recesses again just let them dry and then just use some layering and here um, I'm back to pure sandalwood or maybe already some of the off-white mixed in I think it's pure sandalwood uh, to bring back out the color but uh, as you can see I'm only touching the the higher up volumes so that the mid color can serve as a shade Also here you see that that round uh, muscle tissue or muscle group and I'm just focusing on the, the upper areas to sort of get some senital highlighting. And yeah that's that's the last pass that I'm doing with the pure sandalwood. And here I'm, I added some some white, which uh, is going to be the last highlight. And again, I'm just layering layering that color on. And also here I'm not using colors that are too diluted because I want some coverage and uh, if they're if the gradients are not smooth enough or it's too harsh then I'm, I'm using a then brush again to feather the gradients out but uh, usually you can get away with the right consistency And here I'm already trying to set up a bit of a direction for the first structure that I'm going to, to paint afterwards. At least in the in the upper third of that hind leg. Just bringing back some of the mid-tones. And yeah, like I said, you can see it's a bit of of back and forth. At this point, uh, at this point, it's not wet and wet anymore. More f layering and glazing, and you can see here, I'm just correcting some of the gradients again, wiping away um, the sandalwood and white mix that uh, got too intense. And switching to, to a detail brush and just adding some some spots of white to go with the senator light.
and I'm going to explain it in another video but I'm trying to stay away from white but uh, this is a color that I thought was already really light and I think needed some of the white yeah and here I'm just feathering out the last parts of the volumes that I thought were too dark and now I'm switching again to the front leg and just doing the same just placing the highlights with some turquoise uh, mixed with off-white and again just adding layers of light color feathering them out with water and sometimes you know you saw me dabbing my fingers on that also uh, gives back some of, of the gradient by distributing the color over the, the volumes yeah just adding more and more of the off-white just focusing on the volumes Here I added some some shading, I think it was a dark blue to get the contrast more focused or more intense Carefully also focusing on the area where there's a, a gradient between the blue and the, the red just not making it too intense again doing some feathering and uh, I'm also adding some of the red uh, apparently later <laughs> right so here I mixed some black with the dark blue that I had applied on the claws and the scales and just sort of giving it um, a thick wash to get back some of the of the darker color or get the, the color more dark and also letting it flow into the recesses to get some more shading done um, here I, I painted the scales in some blue tone I'm later switching that up and I'm painting it in red to get mm, the the contrast back out again of the red and the blue but yeah some last highlights on the blue with a bit more of the off-white edit just carefully putting in some some points of interest and again feathering it out where the gradient got too harsh You can see it's a bit of a process, just adding layers of blue and red. Here I do apply the highlight color. Again, mixing some off-white, just a tiny bit of off-white with the, the base red to get some of the volumes highlighted. Just 
so it turns a bit of a pinkish mm, highlight color adding another layer and making sure that the gradients are smooth Here I'm starting to highlight the, the scales with the dark with a mixture of of black and and the base red that I used for the upper body. I'm going to show how I painted the scales in a, a later video. There's still some some footage in here. So uh, <clears throat> you can kind of see that there's uh, in those recesses there's still the base color going on, so the sandalwood, right? And here is the blending, or the wet blending is starting towards the red. Um, so I kept the red in the recesses to go up here. And maybe I overdid the highlighting here a bit, so I might have to or might want to tone that down a bit towards red again. Because now it kind of looks like, okay, there's uh, this massive white block here. Yeah, hmm. we'll see. I might have to or I might want to... Let's try. Um, I'll get this to look a bit more distinguished. And that's what I'm going to try here. I'll just take the base color and add some sandalwood. So the base color from down here. And I'll just carefully layer this up. So that we have a bit of a highlight color going on up here as well. Because I feel like this is looking a tiny bit boring. Just keep the pure red for the shadows, so uh, this volume down here should have a shadow. And now I just add some of that as I move along. And I'll definitely, up here I'm going to paint some patterns, sort of like the originals have, while the, the box arts of Games Workshop have. Just to break up a bit the the monotony of of the red. I 
and again when I feel like there's too um, there's not enough blending going on I'll just take a damp brush and feather out the edges again mixing just mixing layering and feathering Okay, so uh, this does look a bit rough right now, but I'm not too worried because, like I said, I want some of the original color back, some of the intensity here anyway. So I'll apply a few washes with the with that intensity, and that will just bring back the yeah the saturation. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna YOLO apply a wash of this red again. Okay, feather out some of it where I don't want it to go too much. And then make sure I don't get any pulling. as much down here so hopefully as this dries it's going to give us back some of the <coughs> some of the initial intensity And down here is just water. I wiped away most of the color. And there's some pooling. I just wipe away the corners so that I don't have any uh, edges showing. So yeah, what I want to achieve is uh, kind of the gradient from from the red to the to the sandalwood again, which should start somewhere here. And that also means I think I want to tone down the red shades here a tiny bit because the base color should be the sandalwood and not necessarily red. I uh, just realized down here what we can do since uh, yeah we want some shading also in the sandalwood just take a bit of sandalwood and add some black and then just opposite of the highlighting add some of that dirty-ish color we have a bit of a, a hint already there. But yeah, just, just paint some shadow. And I think also here where the hair is going to start, I'll paint some of that shadow color. 